Danse Macabre. The Danse Macabre, from the French language, also called the Dance of Death, is an artistic genre of allegory of the late Middle Ages on the universality of death, no matter one station in life, the Danse Macabre unites all. The Danse Macabre consists of the dead or a personification of death summoning representatives from all walks of life to dance along to the grave, typically with a pope, emperor, king, child, and laborer. They were produced as mementos mori, to remind people of the fragility of their lives and how vain were the glories of earthly life. Its origins are postulated from illustrated sermon texts. The earliest recorded visual scheme was a now lost mural at Holy Innocent Cemetery in Paris dating from 1424 to 1425. The earliest recorded visual example is the lost mural on the south wall of the Cemetery of the Holy Innocents in Paris, which was painted in 1424 to 25 during the Regency of John, Duke of Bedford, with its emphatic inclusion of a dead crown king at a time when France did not have a crown king, the mural may well have had a political subtext. There were also painted schemes in Basel, the earliest dating from circa 1440, a series of paintings on canvas by Bernd Nock, in Lübeck, 1463, the initial fragment of the original Bernd Nock painting, accomplished at the end of 15th century, in the St. Nicholas Church, Tallinn, Estonia, Dons Macabre, the painting at the back wall of the chapel of S.B. Maria Nascrilinama in the Istrian town of Berum, 1471. Painted by Vincent of Kastov, the painting in the Holy Trinity Church, Rostovlye, Istria by John of Kastov, 1490. A notable example was painted on the cemetery walls of the Dominican Abbey and burned by Niklaus Manuel Deutsch in 15 and 16 sevenths. This work was destroyed when the wall was torn down in 1660, but a 1649 copy by Albrecht Caillou is extant. There was also a dance of death painted around 1430 and displayed on the walls of Pardon Churchyard at Old St. Paul's Cathedral, London, with texts by John Lydgate, known as the Dossier of St. Polis, which was destroyed in 1549. The deathly horrors of the 14th century, such as recurring famines, the Hundred Years' War in France, and, most of all, the Black Death, were culturally assimilated throughout Europe. The omnipresent possibility of sudden and painful death increased the religious desire for penance, but it also evoked a hysterical desire for amusement while still possible, a last dance is cold comfort. The Dance Macabre combines both desires, in many ways similar to the medieval mystery plays. The Dance with Death allegory was originally a didactic dialogue poem to remind people of the inevitability of death and to advise them strongly to be prepared at all times for death. See Memento Mori and Ars Moriendi. Short verse dialogues between death and each of its victims, which could have been performed as plays, can be found in the direct aftermath of the Black Death in Germany and in Spain, where it was known as the Totentanz and La Danse de la Muerte, respectively. The French term Danse Macabre may derive from the Latin Korea Macabiorum, literally Dance of the Maccabees. In Two Maccabees, a deuterocanonical book of the Bible, the grim martyrdom of a mother and her seven sons is described and was a well-known medieval subject. It is possible that the Maccabean martyrs were commemorated in some early French plays or that people just associated the book's vivid descriptions of the martyrdom with the interaction between death and its prey. An alternative explanation is that the term entered France via Spain, the Maccabir, cemetery, being the root of the word. Both the dialogues and the evolving paintings were extensive penitential lessons that even illiterate people who were the overwhelming majority, could understand. Frescoes and murals dealing with death had a long tradition and were widespread, for example the legend of the three living and the three dead, on a rider hunt, three young gentlemen meet three cadavers, sometimes described as their ancestors, who warn them, quad fumus, estis, quad sumus, vo eritis, what we were, you are, what we are, you will be. Numerous mural versions of that legend from the 13th century onwards have survived, for instance, in the Avisma or the residential Longthorpe Tower outside Peterborough. Since they showed pictorial sequences of men and corpses covered with shrouds, those paintings are sometimes regarded as cultural precursors of the new genre. A dance macabre painting may show a round dance headed by death or a chain of alternating dead and lived dancers. From the highest ranks of the medieval hierarchy, usually pope and emperor, descending to its lowest, beggar, peasant, and child, each mortal's hand is taken by a skeleton or an extremely decayed body. The famous Totentanz by Bernd Nock in St. Mary's Church, Lübeck, destroyed during the Allied bombing off Lübeck in World War II, 
presented the dead dancers as very lively and agile, making the impression that they were actually dancing, whereas their living dancing partners looked clumsy and passive. The apparent class distinction in almost all of these paintings is completely neutralized by death as the ultimate equalizer, so that a sociocritical element is subtly inherent to the whole genre. The Totentanz of Meetnitz, for example, shows how a pope crowned with a smiter is being led into hell by the dancing death. Usually, a short dialogue is attached to each victim, in which death is summoning him, or, more rarely, her, to dance and the summoned is moaning about impending death. In the first printed Totentanz textbook, Anon, Weierseiliger Rober Deutscher Totentanz, Heidelberger Blockbutch, Approx.1460, Death Addresses, for example, The Emperor. At the lower end of the Totentanz, Death Calls, for example, The Peasant to Dance, Who Answers. The famous designs by Hans Holbein the Younger, 1497-1543, for his Dance of Death series were drawn in 1526 while he was in Basel. They were cut in wood by the accomplished Form Schneider, Block Cutter, Hans Lutzelberger. William Ivins, quoting W. J. Linton, writes of Lutzelberger's work, Nothing indeed, by knife or by graver, is of higher quality than this man's doing, for by common acclaim the original ser technically the most marvelous woodcuts ever made. These woodcuts soon appeared in proofs with titles in German. The first book edition, containing 41 woodcuts, was published at Lyons by the Treschsel brothers in 1538. The popularity of the work and the currency of its message are underscored by the fact that there were 11 editions before 1562 and over the 16th century perhaps as many as 100 unauthorized editions and imitations. Ten further designs were added in later editions. The Dance of Death 1523-26, refashions the late medieval allegory of the dance macabre as a reformist satire, and one can see the beginnings of a gradual shift from traditional to reformed religion. That shift had many permutations however, and in a thoroughly detailed study Natalie Zeman Davis has shown half the contemporary reception and afterlife of Holbein's designs lent themselves to neither purely Catholic or Protestant doctrine but could be outfitted with different surrounding prefaces and sermons as printers and writers of different political and religious leanings took them up. Most importantly, it was the pictures in the Bible quotations above them were the main attractions, both Catholics and Protestants wished, through the pictures, to turn men's thoughts to a Christian preparation for death. The 1538 edition which contained Latin quotations from the Bible above Holbein's designs, and a French quatrain below composed by Gilles Corset actually did not credit Holbein as the artist. It bore the title, Les Simulacres and, History is Faces slash de la Mort, Autonel slash Gamut Portrix, K. Artifi slash Silent Imaginees. A Lion. Soups les coups de cloyne. MD 38. Images and illustrated facets of death, as elegantly depicted as they are artfully conceived. These images and workings of death as captured in the phrase history ease faces of the title are the particular exemplification of way death works, the individual scenes in which the lessons of mortality are brought home to people of every station. In his preface to the work Jean Duval, the prior of Montrosier, addresses Jean de Tourzel, the abbess of the convent at St. Peter at Lyons, and names Holbein's attempts to capture the ever-present, but never directly seen, abstract images of death simulacres. He writes, Simulacres lay disivrement, pour se que simulacre viand a simular, and feint re se que point. Simulacre they are most correctly called, for simulacre derives from the verb to simulate and to feign that which is not really there. He next employs a trope from the memento mori, remember we all must die, tradition and a metaphor from printing which well captures the undertaking soft death, the artist, and the printed book before us in which these simulacres of death barge in on the living. Et pur ton quan na putre chos plus approchant da la similitude de mort, k la personne mort, on die cell effigy simulacres, and faces de mort, pour en nos ponce en premier la memoire de mort plus ovis, k ni pu en tout les rhetorics descriptions de orators. And yet we cannot discover any one thing more near the likeness of death than the dead themselves, whence come these simulated effigies and images of death's affairs, which imprint the memory of death with more force than old rhetorical descriptions of the orators ever could. Holbein's series shows the figure of death in many disguises, confronting individuals from all walks of life. None escape death's skeletal clutches, not even the pious. As Davis writes, Holbein's pictures are independent dramas in which death comes upon his victim in the midst of the latter's own surroundings and activities. 
This is perhaps nowhere more strikingly captured than in the wonderful blocks showing the plowman earning his bread by the sweat of his brownie to have his horses speed him to his end by death. The Latin from the 1549 Italian edition pictured here reads, In sudor vultus tui, veseris pain tuo. Through the sweat of thy brow you shall eat your bread, quoting Genesis 3.19. The Italian verses below translate, Miserable and thee sweat of your brow, comma, slash, it is necessary that you acquire the bread you need eat, comma, slash, but, may it not displease you to come with me, comma, slash, if you are desirous of rest. Or there is the nice balance in composition Holbein achieves between the heavy laden traveling salesman insisting that he must still go to market while death tugs at his sleeve to put down his wares once and for all, venite at me, qui vonerati estis. Come to me, all ye who, labor and, are heavy laden, quoting Matthew 11.28. The Italian here translates, Come with me, wretch, who are way down, comma, slash, since I am the dame who rules the whole world, colon, slash, come and hear my advice, comma, slash, because I wish to lighten you of this load. Musical examples include, The motif Death and the Maiden, is related to, and may have been derived from, the Danse Macabre. It has received numerous treatments in various media, most prominently Schubert's quartet of that name. Further developments of the Don's Macabre motif include Death in the King's Horseman, Death in the Senator, Death in the Compass, and Death in the Physician. Dan's Macabre a song put out by a band called Ghost in 2018. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.